Good morning, and I hope everyone's had a lovely week, though I know things are not as we wish. But one thing sure is interest rates are going down. That should be good news for the stock market. May not be good news for the average worker, which is why I figured it out. I'd like to burst into song to say, I figured it out. I figured it out. I now know how we can do a third party on the cheap. And it's really easy. Zoom. What we do is we have a combination of folks traveling across the country, making sure that the Democratic Republican Party becomes a, a fait accompli on every ballot. To meet people, well, we do it in person and we do it on Zoom. If we're lucky, we can enlist the various unions that have not gone one way or the other politically. But it looks to me like a third party is a definite. The two extremes can no longer function really effectively to get a lot of what we need done, like antitrust. Corporations are too seamlessly involved with government, and government is too small to effectively enforce antitrust. It's hard for them to even keep up with the best people in the NLRB to keep up and negotiate good terms for union workers. On the plus side, I've heard that they're going to make a lot of the Starbucks entities that close because the folks want to unionize, they're going to make it reopen. So that's a good thing. Congress did not pass emergency funds for Ukraine. There will be ongoing funding for Ukraine. They passed an 88 billion, $86 million defense budget. Does it have everything we all hope for? I don't know. We'll guess have to find out. Back to the third party. There's no wonder there's no mechanism in most states for a third party. The Republican Party and the Democratic Party have a lock on the states. Gerrymandering now favors all the Republican states. Unless you have a write-in ballot in New York or you file really early for that third party, you're not getting another party into the public domain for voting. In fact, in New York, where we're supposed to be, Liberals, seems to me we're not all that liberal at all. We don't even have no excuse absentee balloting. If everyone was mailed a ballot, we'd have a much higher turnout for both elections for president, governor, senators and representatives, and also for voting in off years. It could be so easy, but we haven't done it. We don't even have citizen ballot initiatives allowed. We'd have to have an amendment to the New York State Constitution in order for citizens to have any kind of say in state government. This all can be handled quite handily and quite readily with 
a simple amendment. Michigan is doing wonders for its prison population because they've got citizen ballots. They were able to get rid of gerrymandering. They were able to now allow it so that kids do not go to jail. They're getting rid of juvenile offenders. And how are they doing it? Through citizen ballots and special judges who will look at the kids and decide what kind of community service they'll have. Michigan is way ahead of the rest of us. That's what we should all be doing, thinking of ways to make people's lives easier. And if the two-party system doesn't do it, then I think the Democratic Republican Party could do it. It's too bad we're not allowed to vote from our homes under an encrypted system where we could just cast our votes just like we buy stuff on the internet and make it a one, two, three deal. It would be simple. Those folks who don't have computers, don't have broadband, well, the polls could easily accomplish that and let them vote over longer than a 10 day span where they have time to get to the polls and they won't have to stay a great length of time away from work. Because if most of us are voting by mail or over the computer, it's simple. So I think the third party is absolutely doable. Will it cost money? You bet. I mean, I would think you'd have to spend a couple of million bucks for salaries. You need marketing, you need social media marketing, you need people placed in every state who can network and organize for you if you're doing this on a national level. If you're doing it on a state level, they gotta have the same networks of folks who could organize for you uh, you could meet them in person, you could meet them over Zoom, and somehow you can get to all of the electorate quickly and easily. I was one of 11,000 people on a call with Larry Summers, the head of Harvard University many years ago, at least 20. And with 11,000 people, we were all enthralled to listen to him and his platform. He wasn't running for any office. He happened to be speaking about anti-Semitism. But that's besides the point. The power of Zoom is a tool to be used when you don't have a hell of a lot of money. So you can Zoom in. You can rail in, motor in, fly in, and do it strategically over the course of whatever many months you have or years. You're doing it in states. You got the state network locked up. Same thing for local politicians. And you don't have to spend $5 billion to elect a president. If you do it my way, it would be a hell of a lot easier. And you'd be paying people across the country with expertise. Expertise in the legislation that's required, the funding mechanisms that are required to be recorded. You would be able to pay help for marketing and social media marketing, and then for travel arrangements. 
So it would be a large organization that would propel someone towards the presidency, the Senate, the House of Representatives, or even just running. And it's not even because it's so important to have good candidates in state and local government. It could be a party that could take off a large tent, a tent for Republicans and Democrats to get together with good common sense ideas. Some good things have happened also in this week. COP28 is actually going to say that fossil fuels will indeed be phased out. That's a win-win, especially when the gases in our atmosphere, the gases that we breathe that we don't know we're breathing are up to 440 parts per million and they're toxic. It's no wonder our people's health are at risk and they're at risk at a time when the health insurance companies no longer want to pay for preventive medicine. That's unfortunate. But there's progress. There should be more progress. Methane gases can be capped. Methane is heavier than carbon. And methane is causing a lot of our problems. Truthfully, you would think the fossil fuel companies would want to cap those gases, whether it's at the refineries or at the source. It would trap at least 2% of all gas released into the atmosphere. And it would make them more profitable. But I guess when you got so much money, it really doesn't matter. Why invest in anything? You just let it rip. But the time has come when too many of us are not in good health for this to continue. Obviously, something's wrong with America when 46 million people are addicted to drugs. It's unfortunate. It's, it's more than unfortunate. It's a tragedy. And one thing that should happen is there should be no criminalization for being an addict. There's causes for people to seek addiction. And those causes should be investigated and rooted out. And also, if somebody is given the appropriate drug to eliminate the addiction at the right time, they say there really is rehabilitation. So there's problems in America. One of them is Donald Trump. And Biden says he wouldn't run if it wasn't for Donald Trump. But you know what? Any of those other people who are running with Donald Trump, like Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis, they're equally as bad. I don't want someone banning my books. I don't want people who stand up for the Texas abortion law, where when a woman's life is endangered, she can't get an abortion unless she goes out of state. I don't want repressive government. I want a Goldilocks government. And that's why I say it's doable with the right people. We'll need help. But I think we got the talent. You were there for Bernie Sanders. There's talent in America. Talent that's crying out for a decent living and to be heard. And with the right candidates in power, every voice counts not just American business, but all our voices. So 
let's shoot for that, folks. And let's see how far we can go. Because I think the project is doable. There's a lot that we can do. People matter. All of us matters. Having good jobs are important. Being well paid and having benefits really matter. And with the right government, labor can be resurrected once again. And that's what I'm looking for, the resurrection of the middle class. So bye now and have a lovely day.